So I have a question for you. What's better, price reduction or closing cost credit? I'm gonna answer that in this video for you today. As real estate agents, most of you do not have the training or the tools to show a comparative analysis to your buyers. And so therefore you typically default on a price reduction only. But is that the best way to go? In most cases, it's actually not, and I'm gonna show you why. But first, let me rehash and show you what level of closing costs are available for each loan type. So for loan type conventional, anywhere from three to 10% down, because 3% is the minimum down payment for a first time home buyer, everybody else it's at least five. So, say, so anywhere from three to 10%, you get 3% seller concession plus title. Since title is a negotiable item, that is excluded from a 3% calculation. Next, 10 to 25% down, it's 6%. And right now in today's market, closing costs with the way taxes and insurance are, can be up to 6%. Remember closing, I wanna make a real quick point here about closing costs. I hear so many random ideas about closing. It usually goes something like this. Closing should be about four or $5,000, but there's no like, there's no itemized statement with that. There's no, where did you get that number from? Because they're never four or five thousand dollars anymore. They're more like four or five or six percent. Because you know lender fees are actually pretty minimal. Most lender fees are around fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars. Most people right now have to pay discount points. Then you have the title, not just the title insurance, but there's a small buyer owner's title policy. There's title endorsements. There's the escrow fee, and then you've got survey recording. There's all kind of other stuff. There's a notary fee. You know, and then there's also setting up your taxes and insurance. You prepay your insurance up front for a year and you have to put an escrow account in most cases. That's easily four, five, six percent. That's a big chunk of money. So keep that in mind when we're talking about closing costs. So look, let's look at some of the other loan types here. So FHA is six percent, VA is four, USDA is six, and then for investment property, you're capped at two percent. And right now, you know, if you're buying a rental property, you always want to try to get that two percent to pay the extra points. So here's the thing, a little caveat on a VA that's very, not very well known, but put this golden nugget in your back pocket. The actual language is all reasonable and customary fees, including up to 4%. What that means is you can take and pay everything on the closing disclosure and an additional 4%. So what would that 4% possibly go to? Well, check this out. You might have a veteran that has a judgment, a lien, that has a car payment that he has to pay off, that has a credit card that has to be paid off, you can actually structure in a VA deal, closing costs and up to 4%. So that's a key thing to keep in your back pocket. If you have a veteran that needs help and you can find a house with a flexible seller and has that kind of flexibility, that maybe can do, that maybe can do you know, eight, nine, 10% instead of taking off the price, you can help that veteran out. So now the rubber meets the road. Which is better financially? Let's look at it right now. So I took a conventional loan. I'm gonna switch this view here real quick. I took a conventional loan and I did price reduction versus closing cost credit. And I did 550 as the amount. I did 5% down, but just so you know, this math, since we're comparing all across the board to 5% down, it wouldn't matter if it's 20 or 25, it's gonna be the same kind of situation. And you can see yesterday's interest rates at close of business, it was two points at 6.99%. Our pricing is a little bit better than that. So I just went at the day's pricing, 6.875 at two points, okay? So at option number one, we assumed a 565 purchase price. So if we got 3% off, we said, we'll just call it, we're gonna call it $15,000. So we have $15,000 right here. We have a 550 purchase price. The payment all in is 46.32 and the out-of-pocket is 50,000. And your client's thrilled because why? I got a great deal, I got 15,000 off. However, let's look if we had applied it elsewhere. What if we just applied it to closing costs? Same rate, same deal, payment's a little bit higher, okay? The payment's $119 higher, but it's $15,000 less out of pocket. And this is a key point. You have to understand, you have to be working with someone like myself who can do a proper total cost analysis and has a high degree of financial literacy because that $15,000 is part of the cost to buy a house. It's, it, it is literally, it's, it's indisputable part of a cost to buy a house and that has to be taken into account. Now, there's another thing that can be done. We could leave, take the same closing cost credit, pay a couple extra points, buy the rate down to $6,000, still have lower cash to close, but now the payment's $307 lower. 
So those are some options. But how do we determine which is best, right? So how do we determine when comparing them? Because you can look at it and go, wow, I like the lower payment on the one, but I like the lower cash to close. Well, let's just look at it from a cost basis. We'll do it just one year only. On a one year cost basis, side by side analysis, you're saving the close to $15,000 on option one. It's $14,771. And then it's $89,000, almost $9,000 on option two. And if you look at net worth, you even have end up with a little bit higher net worth on all on of those two as well. And so the bottom line is, is that closing cost credits when structured pop properly are in almost all cases going to trump and beat a price reduction. There are some exceptions. One of them is if it's a short term buy and sell. If it's a flip property or if you have somebody that wants to do, I have a lot of people, for example, that say, uh, I want to buy this house, but then I'm going to sell my house and six months later pay this off. In those cases, I would do a completely different strategy. I would do the lowest cost loan, but I would take the price reduction if I had it or a combination of both. But the reality of it is, is that in most cases, the closing cost credit will always be the price reduction. If you'd like me to demonstrate this to your clients, let me know. Plus, here's the other thing. It helps a client from, from your point of view as a realtor. If you can help somebody cut their cash to close, or use it to dramatically lower the payment. I mean, there's a lot more I can actually do here with lowering payments. We have one-year payment subsidies, two-year payment subsidies. I didn't get into all that in this video, but if you can show that, hey, we're gonna take this credit and rather just give a, like the price reduction, it's like a piece of toast with no butter and jelly, right? Whereas the closing costs, it's an exciting thing where we can address usually the two primary concerns, which is payment or out-of-pocket costs with those options. So I hope you find this helpful and I hope you're killing it this week. Let me know if I can be of any assistance and have a great day.